Hey guys, what is up? So, I feel like I'm in a very storytelling mood right now, today. So, I'm going to tell this story. Um, I don't know if it's going to piss you off. I don't know if you're going to learn anything from this. But I just want to share it because why the hell not? Um, I think people respond, you know, positively when I share stuff. So, I mean, from my life. Um, so, and, and it has to do with anime. So, this is a story of how I got introduced to fairy tale. Okay, so when I was in college, I had to get a job. Uh, because back in 2009, the economy was scoff-fucking a lot of people. So I got a job uh, as a tutor, as a writing tutor. Everybody there was very nice, uh, but there was this one guy, this one... And I'm sorry, I have to say that he was fat just because he was a... He turned out to be a, an asshole. And when, when you're, you know, overweight and, and your personality is that of an asshole, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to notice that you're fucking fat. One of the things that would make him an asshole was that we were supposed to take turns. So if a student, uh, you know, came in, I would, let's say, I would, I would go and help that student. And then if, if another student would come in, then somebody else would, would get up and help that student. So we, we would take turns. But this guy, most of the time, we would get a lot of students, and this guy would never get up. He would just stay on his computer, just talking on Facebook or, or doing his homework while he was supposed to be working. So the point is, he would rarely work, and since he was really good friends with the director, uh, we eventually did complain to the director, but nothing really changed. Before I found out about his true colors, uh, I was helping a student one time, and I overheard him uh, talking to another tutor about uh, the ten Tail Beast. And I was like, oh, th this guy's a Naruto fan. So later on... That day, I was like, "Hey, did I did I hear you talk about the Ten Tails?" Like, and he got really excited. He's like, "Oh my gosh, another Naruto fan!" So he got really excited, and and you know, we we exchanged views on the series and all that stuff. And uh, eventually, it just came to a point where, like every week, he would come up to me, you know, to my desk and ask, "So what do you think about the chapter?" And you know, I I would tell him, you know, like sort of like a mini review. It went on like that for a while, but then I started noticing he would still come to me or whatever. But I just started noticing that he would just begin to complain like a lot. I remember during the B and Kizame fight, he would say, "Man, nobody gives a shit about B and Kizame." And yes, he would call him Kizame. And like nobody gives a shit about those two characters. This guy's just writing that shit for the money. You know, and then he would also say, the only good thing about this chapter is that it sort of reminded me that Naruto is not a complete idiot. And then the war came up and then uh, I was like, hey, uh, Gata's speech was really good. I said, like, I thought it was really well written. And he's like, no, man, that was a faggoty ass speech. Like this motherfucker, according to him, what Gata had said was this. OK, so I was once emo. Then I found a friend and now I am not emo. So let's not be emo together and attack the other side. So I'm just sitting there listening to this guy, and since I'm not a tard, I, I'm not offended at all by this. I'm actually kind of entertained by his, by his rants. It was just really funny to me. Anyway, we go on break, right? I think it was spring break. And we come back. And I remember I was, I was uh, you know, in the back, done helping a student. And he comes over to me. He, you know, he walks across the room, over to my desk, and he's like, hey. Uh, he pretty much lets me know that he's dropped Naruto. I'm just not looking forward to any new chapters, uh, and I think the, the plot is collapsing on itself. And I, I'm just sitting there nodding, you know. Not a single fuck was given on my part. Uh, but then, then he says, but me and this other tutor, you know, the, the other guy that he would also talk to Naruto about, uh, we've picked up a better series. And I don't know why he does, he did this. I, I, I have that image in my memory. So imagine an overweight person doing this, because he's getting excited, because he's building it up. And he's like, it's called Fairy Tale. Uh, okay. He starts giving me this intro, and it was a really good intro, I'll, I'll give him that. Um, you know, he, he was talking about, like, it was about mages, and of course my first reaction is like, mages? Like, what the fuck? Who would have thought of that? No, but, uh, no, and then he starts talking about dragon slayers and how there's, like, different types of magic and all that stuff. Um, he, he said basically that their magic depends on them eating their element, which I think, I mean, I think it just depends. I don't know. Does Gray eat ice to power up? I don't know. Now I start thinking, hey, like, we're supposed to be working. You know, this isn't the right time to be talking about this. But eventually, you know, he, he, he stops. And he's about to leave. And he's like, I know you'll like it. And I'm like, 
okay. I mean, it sounds good, but I'm like, I'm not sold on it quite yet. I'm a little bit skeptical. And I'm like, why? Why, why do you think I'm going to really like it? And <laughs> he goes, because you and I, we know fine bitches. Uh, are you talking about a MAGA here? Like, what, what's going on? First of all, I don't consider the girls I know to be bitches. I just don't. Even though some of them are really, really attractive, I don't consider them to be bitches. And, and second of all, what? Yeah, man, you, we, we know fine bitches. And, you know, you've seen my Facebook. And, and, and like, yeah, and, and you're still single. I mean, I don't. What, what does that have to do with anything? Anyway, he walks away. Eventually, I check Fairy Tale out, so I, I kind of get like a feeling of what he was trying to say. Anyway, uh, I, I, I fall out of it. I drop the series. I'm not going to review it. Please don't ask me. Uh, the Fairy Tale fandom really scares the shit out of me. Like each week, I check out King of Lightning's videos, uh, Fairy Tale videos. Uh, the, he says something negative about it, like he criticizes it as he's supposed to be doing. Fairy tale fans go fucking crazy. Like it's a clusterfuck in those comment sections. I'm I'm telling you, like for real, no shit. They get so offended, they start calling him a One Piece tard. And believe me, I know Naruto tards. All right, I know One Piece tards. I rather fuck with them any day of the week than take on the fairy tards. All right, so obviously I'm blurring out the name because I don't want people to feel embarrassed. But look, look at that. Look at that. And and the only reason I'm putting up this comment is because. I remember once I got a comment that said, if anybody talks anything negative about fairy tale, I'll, I will go to their houses, tie them to a chair, and beat the shit out of them because I'm a member of fairy tale. Now, it's not the same person that wrote this, I'm pretty sure, but I just, I just want to show you guys proof of, of how, why it's a concern. Now, this has to be my favorite comment of all time. It really does. Look at this. King of Lightning, this manga exists in the fourth dimension. Not in the third dimension, like Naruto or One Piece. In the third dimension, matter is supreme over matter. But in the fourth dimension, mind empowers matter. Mind and spirit are supreme and give birth to matter. What is That is why feelings are so powerful in the fourth dimension and make sense. Because feelings can overcome power in the fourth dimension. Hero is a fourth dimensional author who is not appreciated by third dimensional people. <laughs> Eventually, this girl from Spain came in to work with us, and everybody could agree that she was really hot. Not my type, but okay. Like, if you're hot, you're hot. So she was hot. And uh, we found out that th she got the job because the guy that I was talking about, you know, the, the overweight person, he recommended her for the position of a tutor. Which is fine, whatever. Uh, but we we slowly started figuring out that this guy had a really, really massive crush on this girl. So what happened was that this guy pretty much turned into her lap dog. That's pretty much what happened. Um, you know, each time she needed something, bam, he was there. He would also like, he would help her out with homework. Like keep in mind, we're in college. He would also buy her stuff, burn CDs for her, all this bullshit. And everybody can tell that the only person who's interested is him. So this girl, you know, uh, she she keeps being his friend, but there's the, there's no interest in him whatsoever. And because he's so infatuated, he would work even less because he would he would say, "Oh, I'm helping her with a paper. I'm motherfucker. We got students here, you know." So he would work even less. And then there came a time where, where he was even more of an asshole. At one point, this guy comes over to me. Uh, and asks me about fairy tale, and I just don't want to talk to him at all because of what's going on. He's not working. He's being a lapdog, all this stuff, uh, and he's just being a douche to a lot of people. And it, it, the only person he cares about is that girl, who, by the way, doesn't give a fuck about him. But he asks me about fairy tale, and I say, just to brush him off, I say, I don't know, man. There's a lot of flying cats in that series. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to take it seriously. I know that's a bullshit reason, but I just said whatever came out of my mouth because I really don't want to talk to this guy. Anyway, he, it just gets getting progressively worse, and at one point he draws me on a whiteboard, you know, with a marker, with a speech bubble that says, Oh, I love happy, because according to him, that's going to annoy me, because I don't like the flying cats. When the fact of the matter is, I don't give a shit about the flying cats, I just, I mean, whatever. Uh, so, so I let it go, you know, whatever. He wants to be funny, try to be funny, because nobody even got the reference. I mean, nobody even knows what a happy is. Uh, but anyway, or who happy is. 
And then he did something to a friend and that pissed me off. And then I'm like, okay, all right, fuck it. I draw him on the whiteboard, like a Mr. Potato Head, like his face, his feet stuck to his body with, with cat wings, cat ears, and a, and a cat tail. And then my friend decides that he's gonna write something about the girl that he likes so that if he ever sees that drawing with, with the text, it's gonna really embarrass him. The next time I walk in, the thing is completely erased. And then he starts being really nice to me, so it's kind of obvious that he kind of saw it and, and got the message. However, I did find something else. Well, I found out something that kind of made me feel bad for the guy. Um, the, the girl, uh, at, at one point during the weekend, called him up and said, hey, I got invited to this party. And uh, so he got really excited because if somebody's calling you for a party, you're like, oh shit, like, are we, are we going together? So, you know, he got really excited, got on his car. He, she needed a ride. And, uh, you know, she, she comes out of the dorm uh, with like a mini skirt, like a, not even a mini skirt. Basically, she was wearing a belt pretty much. Like you could pretty much see everything. And, you know, uh, so this guy, I, I, I think this guy is getting really excited over this. And uh, he drives her over to where the party's supposed to be. And it turns out that the party is at a frat house, you know, filled with frat boys that are going crazy. You know, they're getting drunk. You know, those parties, they get, they get crazy. And she opens the door, walks out and says, okay, thanks. Slams the door and goes over to the frat party, which, I mean, basically, like, she only needed him for the ride, and obviously, that, that screwed him up, and, and that's why he was being more of a douche, but at the same time, it's like, just because you've had a shitty experience, that doesn't justify you being an asshole to other people, like, it's not our fault that she did that to you, I know it sucks, but like, damn, and anyway, so, you know, she was going to get gangbanged in that party. So obviously that kind of, I don't know if I, I assume it broke his heart. I remember walking out of the library with my group of friends, uh, you know, who I've worked with. And by the way, I, I just went bowling with them um, yesterday. And I saw him sitting on a bench, just, just lo looking out into the open, just lost, you know, just like, not even sad, but just like, and I remember turning back and asking myself, is that sad? And, and the reason I asked myself that was because I couldn't feel bad for him. I, I wanted to, but I couldn't because I know what kind of a person he was like throughout. So yeah, uh, it was just a sad moment to see him like there all alone, you know, because he basically discarded everybody. You want to feel bad, but you can't. You, ju you just can't. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how that ends. Sometimes I do think to myself and, and say, well, you know, at least he has those fairy tale fine ass bitches.